Welcome to all you travelers of the night and even you daywalkers to the new show on this channel, Seek at Night. And tonight we're going to talk about Blade, the video game, the first details that came out back at the game show. You know, I know I'm a few weeks behind on this. I apologize, but I wanted to take some time to set everything up and also wait and see if any more news came out. We didn't get a ton. We got some concept art, but I'll make a separate episode on that. So yeah, I know I'm a few weeks late. I want to follow the evolution of this game all the way to leading up to when it comes out. And I know there probably won't be a ton of news because the game might not come out till 2025, maybe even 2026. From what I hear, they need time to cook, uh, as they said at the Game Awards. So obviously, we'll talk about other Blade-related things, but this show isn't just about Blade. It's also about Moon Knight and Ghost Rider and even Daredevil and other characters that kind of roam the streets at nighttime, taking down bad guys uh, on a street level and then on a spiritual level, too. So we have a lot of characters that we'll talk about on the show, including the Punisher, too, who I'm a big fan of. And his game is actually playing on the arcade in the background here. So I, you know, I get this countertop that has the Punisher game on there. I'm a big fan of that game. I'm a big fan of the character. So we'll talk about a lot of cool characters like that from Marvel specifically and, uh, and just kind of dissect them in between news from the Blade game coming out, season two of Moon Knight, and then any new comic books from Ghost Rider. So those are the main three things we'll cover, but we'll dip into some other darker areas of Marvel in between there as well. But speaking of the dark side of the Marvel Universe, where there's definitely a side with vampires, and that's where Blade resides, right? That's kind of his thing. He doesn't really take down common criminals. He's mainly just trying to take down Dracula and wiping out vampires from existence completely. He's on a mission to just, you know, commit genocide, essentially, of vampires. And he's a really cool character. He's, you know, really brought to life by Wesley Snipes in a big way in the 90s movies and early 2000s films. And that really put Blade on the map in a huge, huge way as far as outside comic books. Because he was always a cool character in the comic books, and he got cooler over the years, certainly. Uh, you know, I was introduced to him during the Night Stalkers run in the 90s Ghost Rider era, and that's kind of when I got introduced to him. But if you go back and read some of the earlier Dracula stuff, really cool character. He's always had style. He's always had, you know, badassery. He's really cool. He's a great character, and he's appeared in a lot of video games. So I'm excited that Arcane Leon is actually going to make a new video game specifically about Blade, who deserves his own game. He's had a couple before. He had like a Game Boy Color game, I think, when the first film came out. And then he had kind of a game based loosely on the first movie for the PS2 and a second game that was loosely based on the second movie. Uh, but uh, those games, they were OK They were, you know, for the time being uh, when they came out. And then he appeared in other games, you know, other people's games like Spider-Man Friend or Foe, which I really liked him in. I love that game. And there was also like the Ultimate Alliance games that he appeared in. And uh, also the Ghost Rider video game. He was playable at one point in that game as well that was on PS2. So he gets around a lot. You know, he's out there. He's a fan favorite. People do dig him. People like him. And it's cool to see new games and new stories being developed for the character because He's worth it. He's an awesome character, and I love you know a lot of things they do with Blade. Even in the comics where I'm like, eh, I don't know about this, but I end up liking it because it's Blade. And a lot of people who write Blade, they typically have their finger on the pulse of how to write that character. Um, except for the movie. The movie's taking forever to come out, so whoever, you know, whatever the holdup there is, hopefully they figure that out soon. But with the video game at the Game Awards, like I said, Bill Roseman came out and Dinga Bakaba, he came out and talked about, uh, you know, the game itself and why Arcane Leon was the one who got the rights to the game to develop it uh, from Marvel games. And Bill Roseman was saying like, look, I mean, these guys have style, which Blade has style. These guys wanted to, you know, they had a fresh take on the character. They wanted to do something that was familiar, but also something that is a little new for the character as well. And setting it in Paris, which was really cool, open world, third person action adventure game. So when they were going over some of these details, I got excited because I'm like, hey, this all sounds fun, right? Like the, I'm really excited to hear what more they're going to tell. So they didn't give us too much more than that. You know, Blade's 50th anniversary was in 2023, and that's kind of why they rushed the announcement for it a little bit. But they're still hiring. They're still trying to get producers and everything. And we'll talk more about that in our next episode that we talk about with Blade in a couple episodes from now when we go over the concept art. But I'll still put a link down below to Arcane Studios LinkedIn account. If you're someone who works in the video game industry and you're looking for work, like I said, I'll put that link down below and you can see if there's a role in the new Blade game that you could you know, join in and be part of the team of Arcane Leon and bring that game to life. Because obviously a lot of us fans, we want that game as soon as possible but as polished and as finished as possible as well. And Arcane Leon, they've done a lot of stuff with under the banner of Arcane Studios. They've done, you know, the Deathloop game. They've done Dishonored, which is really cool because my friend Erica was the main voice of one of the main characters in the second Dishonored game. She did a fantastic job. And, uh, and then also they did Redfall, which wasn't well loved. There's a lot of problems with that game. If you 
you know, dig into it. There were some production problems with that game. That happens sometimes, you know, but I'm hoping none of that happens here. But for now, like the details, it's mature rated, which is great for Blade. That's how it should be. Um, it's single player, which is also very cool. You know, that's what we want. If we want a Blade game, we want to play as Blade. Who knows? Maybe there'll be other characters that you, you play along the way. Uh, maybe there'll be a point where you play as a vampire. Who knows? But at least the main game, as far as we know, it's just single player Blade, which is great. And it's third person. Um, it's going to be an action adventure game. So open world, uh, you know, as far as the limits are of Paris. And they did mention that it's going to be a quarantined Paris. So that's pretty cool. So you have like these walls around the city, I guess, which reminds me of like 28 days later and movies like that, where there's like, a, you know, an outbreak like Raccoon City and Resident Evil, where there's an outbreak in Raccoon City. And they're just like, you know what, build walls around it and just keep them in. Or in, you know, 28 days later case, they were on an island, obviously. So they were like, yeah, it's just an island. It's all of England. Like, forget it, just leave it and, and we won't bother with it. And that seems like really scummy of the rest of the world to do. Uh, but People are, I guess, making a living. You know, we saw the video where the guy's shaving Blade at the barbershop and he's nervous because Blade has fangs and everything. And Blade's like, don't worry, I'm not going to bite you. And then the time runs out, which is like, dude, why are you running you know, your shop open to the last minute like that? That's so dangerous. Uh, but I guess, you know, he had a client and you know, business is business. You want, you know, want to make that money. So the guy was like, all right, I'm going to shave this guy. And, and then the alarm goes off and Blade's like, OK, we got to now go because vampires are going to come out at night. And humans, anyone that's, I guess, out on the streets are open to be eaten or something. We'll find out more details, I'm sure, on that when the game comes out. I have a lot of questions, obviously. Um, but with vampires taking over the night and running the nightlife of Paris and Blade kind of out there as a daywalker, he's able to attack them at certain locations during the day, which would be cool if that's part of the game where you're like, hey, it's daytime. The enemies out in the city aren't in massive droves. You know, you have some time to go and collect supplies, do side quests, meet characters, things like that. You know, maybe you help people bunker in to locations that would be kind of cool i've always wanted that in a resident evil game where you can go and help board up the walls and windows they kind of put a little bit of that in resident evil 2 remake but that'd be neat if blades like hey here's some supplies you know board your windows up you know i, I you know i got some supplies for you some wood some nails and stuff um those could be like goofy little side quests that you could put in there but who knows maybe most of the game takes place at night maybe the whole game takes place in one single night again we don't know we don't have all those details so what we have right now, mature rated, single player, third person action adventure, which is amazing. Um, and then the words here from Bill Roseman and Dinga, where they were talking about just collaborating and putting this together and how Dinga and everyone at Arcane are huge fans of the character of Blade and that they can bring a side of Blade out that they've not experienced before or seen before in a video game and then mix it in with their world of Paris and, you know, having all these great locations in Paris where Blade can run around and jump off of and everything like that, which would be cool because Blade, he can probably run, you know, pretty fast, faster than a normal human, jumps, you know, leaps, you know, jumps upside buildings, maybe does some parkour. There could be a lot of fun with this character to you know, update him for modern day, but also still stay true to the character, which is he gets around by foot a lot. I mean, he does have a motorcycle in the Wesley Snipes movies and stuff, so that'd be cool if you could ride a motorcycle, but, uh, you know, through Paris and everything. But hearing this, all this news so far, good first details. It got me excited and seeing that little clip of the trailer and stuff, really awesome. And so for me, I'm on board. You know, like I said, I'm going to build this whole show around three characters, Blade, Moon Knight, and Ghost Rider. But Ghost Rider, we're mainly going to talk about comics until a movie or TV show is announced for him. With Moon Knight, we're going to mainly talk about the Oscar Isaac show, season one, and then maybe a little bit of comic stuff, but mostly any news we get for season two. But we're also going to talk about our diagnosis when we talk about Moon Knight, which is we have OSDD1A, which is a form of DID. And this is something we've been struggling with for a while and turns out something we've had for a long time that we just recently learned and discovered about ourselves with, um, you know, nothing like reaching 39 years old and finding out that you're an altar in a system that you didn't know existed before. And that's kind of where I am and where I am in my life right now, dealing with altars and struggling with that and kind of, you know, uh, although it's been supportive too. So it's not like all bad, obviously, um, but just it's changed my life in a big way. And so I want to talk about some of the stuff that they do in Moon Knight that deals with DID and, and OSDD and that kind of stuff like systems and how they you know portray them in the show and how maybe I relate to some of it and how it's a little different for me because most systems, as I've learned, are different. So that'll be some of our Moon Knight coverage, which will hopefully make that a little bit more exciting and educational and informational on some level. Uh, but then Blade, you know, Blade is just 
raw, awesome, badass. Uh, and that's what I want to cover. So as the game is developing, we'll talk about any news there. But we'll also talk about the Wesley Snipes films. We'll talk about the TV show, the live action one, and the anime. And maybe a few of the comic books too. We won't do a deep dive into the character, but we will in other media outside of comic books. Because I want to save all my comic book talk strictly for Ghost Rider. Because we're going to probably be waiting a while for any Ghost Rider projects being named. So until then, you know, we got to dive into the comics. So that's where our comic book talk will come in. So if you're into the creepy side of Marvel Comics, you know, everything from Werewolf by Night to, you know, Creature Commandos, you know, Punisher even, when he went Supernatural or Frankenstein-y, uh, we might talk about a little bit of those too. Uh, then Blade, obviously, Moon Knight, Ghost Rider, any of these characters, uh, Man-Thing, we're going to talk about them at some point on this show. So if that's your cup of tea, definitely come over and hang out with us and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. And speaking of Moon Knight, come back for our next episode, episode two of this show, Seek at Night, will be about Moon Knight and talk about time lapses and losing time and amnesia and how that works in the system of Mark and Steven on the show and how it works for someone like me. So if you're interested in that, we'll definitely discuss that in the next episode. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you all in the future. Peace.